All right, guys, uh, now that we have our introduction done on the air compressors, uh, it is going to help us to attempt a typical exam question that is very, very important for us to understand still on the concept that we do not have a clearance. So this is a typical exam question that we are given here whereby we had a single cylinder, right? That's just one cylinder there. Single acting, it's not double acting, it's a single acting. So you said the speed is not affected when it is like that. You just take your speed as it is. We talked about that. So it takes in the air every hour. Air per hour, the volume per unit time. We said this is the effective volume. So we are given the effective uh, volume in this case, all right? Which is given as what? Uh, that is 56,4 uh, cubic meters per per hour. So depending with the question that you're going to use and how the units are given, therefore you have to change those units. But let us just write it like that. And they are saying the air is delivered, delivered, delivered. So that is P2 there, where it is being delivered. Uh, P2 is 900 uh, kilopascal as it is received at a pressure of so it is taken at a pressure of 103 uh, kilopascal and 22 degrees Celsius, which is our T1 at the inlet. So 20, uh, that is 22 there. All right, guys, I actually uh, used a 20 there in this calculation. All right, no problem. So let's just hope we're not going to have the effect of this. So that will be 22 plus 273, which is going to be something like 295. All right, 295. Just going to add uh, 22, that will be 5 there. 295 uh, Kelvin. So like I said, let's, let us just hope it's not going to affect us. All right, then also we have the compressor does not have, does not have a clearance volume. So meaning to say there is no clearance there. We are not considering the clearance. And it is a given by the law PV to the exponent of 1,35. That is N is equal to 1,35. And the stroke, the stroke to bore ratio, I talked about the bore representing the diameter. The bore, that is the diameter. So a given the stroke to the diameter, it's 1,6 S to 1. That means the length as to diameter is 1,6 over 1. I talked about this on the introduction. So that means the relationship between the length and the diameter is that the length is equal to 1,6 of what? Of the diameter. And the speed is given, the speed being uh, 350 revolutions per minute. The electric power, ex the electric motor techno there, they are saying the electric motor experiences a power loss of 10%. There is a loss of 10% on the electric motor. So that is the efficiency of the motor. That one that you're given there is the efficiency of the motor. If you subtract this from 100%, you get the efficiency of the motor, which is at what? 90%. The same thing, we are given another loss there of 12% the compressor experiences a power loss. So that is the mechanical efficiency. If you subtract this from 100%, 100 minus 12, you have got the mechanical, the compressor having a power loss is the mechanical efficiency. So that would be 100 minus 12% uh, percent that we are given, which would be 88. So that would be at 88%. That is the mechanical efficiency. They have to be uh, careful on these. They are giving us efficiencies in a, in a hidden way, all right? Instead of them to be specific, they're just power loss. So you take it 100% minus the 12%. It's now uh, the mechanical efficiency. Then A has got a specific heat capacity of 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So we have got R for A, which is given as 0 0.287 uh, kilojoules per 
kilogram Kelvin. All right, so that was the information that we were given and they need us to calculate uh, the indicated power of the compressor for max, the power of the compressor that are simply talking about what? The actual power of the compressor, that is what they are trying to say there. So the power, like we say that if we've got, uh, because there is an effective volume, it's only the units that they are not into the required units that we need when we are calculating what power, because I said on our introduction, power is equal to what? Power is equal to P1, VE, when given effective volume, it's gonna be VE, E to N, N minus one, uh, that is into P2, we've got P2, we've got P1, everything is there, N minus one over N minus one. And I said this, being our effective, I mean, our effective volume, which is cubic meters per second, the units there of the effective volume must be in cubic meters per second so that you obtain kilojoules per second, which is kilowatt. Okay, make sure that you just make uh, watch the introduction so that you understand what I explained about this. So that is it, guys. Here, we're just gonna substitute because everything is there. Uh, the pressure at the inlet, 103, so that's 103 times VE in a cubic meters per second. This is cubic meters per hour. So we have got 56,4 uh, over what? One hour in seconds. I said it is 3,600, that one. That is 3,600 seconds. So we have converted to seconds times n over n minus one. Remember our n there is what? 1,35. So that's 1,35, everything over 1,35 minus one. So you can even just subtract there. Uh, 1,35 minus one is 0, 0,35. All right, this is gonna multiply this uh, P2 over P1, power, uh, the pressure uh, at the exit, which is 900, the delivery over the inlet, of 103 to the exponent of n minus 1, 1,35 minus 1 over n, 1,35, then you subtract 1. So as long this is in a cubic meters per second, I said that your answer will be kilojoules per second, which represents what? Kilowatt. So that's your indicated power there, which was going to give you 4,69 uh, for in kilowatt, that is kilojoules per second, which is kilowatt. So that was it. We are done. Uh, then the board diameter in the millimeters, eight marks, and the stroke length in the millimeters. All right, the board diameter. I don't think you're going to need this power to calculate the board diameter. Let us just remove this part. All right, the board diameter, uh, the board, that's the diameter then. So the diameter we are given from the swept volume, not not the effective, but from the swept volume. Remember on our introduction, I say that the swept volume is given as, since there is no clearance in this case, the clearance is not given. So our V1 is our swept volume. And that swept volume is equal to what? The swept volume is equivalent to pi d squared over four times L times the stroke length. So since I want to calculate the diameter, I have to determine L in terms of D, which is this one. So you can substitute and make D the subject. Uh, we did this part of the substitute, guys, if you still remember, uh, Vs is gonna be pi D squared over four times the length, which is 1,6 D over one. Then you're gonna just multiply the numerators, pi and 1,6 is gonna be 1,6 pi d squared and d is going to be d to the exponent of 3 over 4. So since I want this d, I'm just going to cross multiply by 4. That's going to be 4 vs is equal to 1,6 pi d cubed divided by 1,6 pi uh, divided by 1,6 pi so that we remain with d to the exponent of 3. That will enable us to determine uh, the value of, what, of d. 1,6 pi, so that will be the cube root. To remove this, that will be the cube root on this side, all right? So that means D is equal to the cube root of this. D is equal to the cube root of four times the swept volume 
over one comma six times pi. So this one on the finding of D, making D the subject is not something that is new because I, I introduced and talked about how do we uh, work with this type of equation. But now also on the VS, everything, there's nothing new here because also I talked about the relationship between VS and VE. We are given here VE. We do not have VS, but there we need VS. But we are given VE. There we have VE. Take note, we have VE. And I said the relationship that happens between these two, that is uh, finding of the VS, and finding of the VE, it lies here, guys. Remember our relationship, we said VE is equal to VS times N. It is a single acting as we are given, so it's one N, there's no effect. If it was a double acting, times two. So since I want to find VS, all right, I'm gonna divide, because I want to find VS is the one that I want, so I'm gonna divide by N. So that's VS is equal to VE over N. So by doing this, we are finding the swept volume, the one that is missing here. It is the swept volume here. So that's the one that we need. So we just need this formula. And I say the units, while well, are you given the speed? The speed is given at the revs per minute. So if this is revs per minute, it means you must have your VE in cubic meters per minute so that this cancels, you remain with the cubic meters per revolution, cubic meters per cycle, which is just what? Cubic meters. So I need VE this time in cubic meters per minute, but it was per hour, per hour, the way that you're given there, per hour. I have to convert to per minute, an hour equivalent to 60 minutes. So I have to divide by 60 to be cubic meters per minute, per minute, they must be per same unit to cancel so that you remain with the VS in cubic meters. So that was uh, what we're supposed to have there. So we're given our 56,4, I mean, cubic meters per hour. So we divide by 60, that will be cubic meters per, per minute over the speed in revolutions per minute, 350, we are going to have Vs as cubic meters per revolution or per cycle, meaning to say there is no effect. It is just Vs. I talked about that. So that's our Vs was going to be 0 0.002, like that. So it's going to be two, uh, 26857 like that. It's going to be 269 uh, cubic meters. So thus we have our VS there. So with this swept volume from the effective volume, from the effective volume, we can calculate swept volume. This is the one that we need here to determine or to have the diameter. So by substituting this into this formula, we are determining our diameter. So therefore, the diameter was going to be uh, the cube root of four times Vs, which is 0, uh, 0.00269 in a cubic meter. So it means our diameter, we get, we are going to obtain it in what? In meters over 1,6 pi. So this was going to give us the diameter uh, in this case, all right? So our diameter uh, is in meters like this. So to just, since we are given the units there to convert to millimeters, you multiply your answer by 10 to the exponent of three. It will be automatically two millimeters. That is to convert to millimeters is the opposite. Remember millimeters is times 10 to the exponent of negative three. So to convert to that millimeters, you, you multiply by the opposite of the power. So it will be to the exponent of what? Of a positive or just multiply by a thousand automatically this will give you 128,879 in millimeters. All right, that will be in uh, millimeters. All right, we have the diameter there. So 
obtaining the diameter, we are going to obtain the length. So if you are someone who calculated first this diameter in meters and you are getting something like diameter is equal to 0 0.129 uh, in meters, you already rounded off to three decimal places. It means when you convert to millimeters, it will be 129 millimeters. That is the one that you use. But if you're someone who, who, who did this by multiplying by 10 to the exponent of 3 without converting the answer, this is what you're going to get. But someone can convert first to meters, still one in the same thing. All right? These answers are the same. All right? Then that was it. So we move on to the other part of the question. That was to calculate what this time. Uh, the stroke length, again, in millimeters. So you just continue from the diameter in millimeters because remember our relationship says that L is equal to 1,6 times D. So that's the stroke length is equal to 1,6 times the diameter. We calculated the diameter. Like I said, you can use this one uh, or we can use this one provided that you do not change your units. So I mean, your, uh, your final answers. So that was going to give us L. Remember the relationship, it's L is equal to 1,6 times D. So we have your D and the answer is needed in millimeters. So I'm just gonna take this 1,6 times my D, which is 128,879. Uh, so this will give us the answer in millimeters automatically, which is 206, 206, is that so? Okay, guys, guys, I do not know. Just, just cross check there also on your calculations. Um, if we are together, because uh, I, on my preparation, I think that's what I got there. So just also cross check. So like I said, if you are someone who used 129, you're gonna use that 129 as it is. You use the 129 as it is. So it's up to you on the rounding off there. How did you round off in the first place? How did you take your answers? in the first place all right so that was the idea of the question if you used uh this 129 it means it was what it was going to be 1,6 times 129 which is something like uh, 206,4 so your layer your strict your stroke length was going to be uh 206,4 in millimeters so that was going to be our stroke length so that is how the questions are given. They want you to use those ratios between what you're given and so forth. So you have to be careful on how to play around with the formulas. As you can see, we need the swept volume in order for us to calculate the diameter, but we needed that swept volume. So you have to find it somewhere from where. That is why I gave you on your introduction, the relationship that happens between the swept volume and the effective volume which is this one. But if it is a double acting, it means VE is equal to VS times 2N. For a double acting, you have to be careful. When they say it's a double acting, you multiply by 2N. So it means VS will be equal to VE over 2N. You divide by 2N, then you have what? Your VE. Always VS, it's cubic meters, which is actually cubic meters per what? per cycle, that is just the cubic meters. But VE is the cubic meters per unit time. Is it per second? Is it per minute? Is it per hour? It depends how you are given. But when you are using your calculation, depending with where, like here you saw that we needed it in cubic meters per, per minute. But when we calculated power, we needed this uh, same VE, but in what? In cubic meters per what? Uh, cubic meters per second because you are calculating power. Power always cubic meters per second. So that's it. With this information, you can answer any question that is given when you are given a question without uh, clearance. We shall work with questions where the clearance is given and we check how do they ask these questions. But as you can see, it was a lot of marks there to consider. So that's it. We shall see more questions to come from Mason African Motives.